Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will review the Dairy NRC 2000 Energy Considerations and Applications. Energy values have maintained on the net energy system, so this did not change from the 1989 NRC. If you go to the energy tables, however, there are a number of different ways of expressing energy values. They include digestible energy, and that's 1x, which means 1 times the maintenance, metabolizable energy, 3 times maintenance, which is where most of our higher producing cows will be at, net energy gain, 3x, this is for rapidly growing heifers, and of course net energy lactation at 3 or 4x. All these energy values are expressed in the feed table when you will go through the booklet. These energies are derived using a TDN from a summative equation. The summative TDN equation is listed below. This is primarily applied from Ohio State University. Included in the calculations are TDNFC. As you can see, that stands for truly digestible non-fiber carbohydrate plus truly digestible crude protein, truly digestible ether extract, truly digestible neutral detergent fiber, and then subtracting off the metabolic fecal TDN value. So this calculates the energy based on these nutrients, which is a major change from the previous NRC. So we can actually test the feed and now estimate energy values. Another important aspect are energy discount values. This also occurred in the 1989 value, but it was always constant for all feeds. Now in the new NRC, this will vary based on multiples of intake above maintenance. So as a cow eats more feed, she gets less actual energy per unit of dry matter from each amount of feed being consumed. But because she's eating more food, or feed in this case, she is getting more energy. So this varies. It also varies based on the energy density of the ration and its feed itself. So it's a very fluid type situation. Therefore, you will need to use the model to calculate a feed energy value for a dietary constituent based on these variables in your feeding program. Bottom line, a feed does not have one energy value like we had in previous editions. Another neat addition to the new dairy NRC in the energy area is the processing adjustment factor. It's also referred to as the PAF. And what this does is adjust for starch availability. And it's only starch. does not apply to other nutrients due to the effect of processing. This will be very important when we look at corn silage, processing corn silage, moisture content of corn silage, and how we process such things as our corn and other cereal grains. Remember, it only applies to the NFC fraction. Here is a table that shows some of the common values in the NRC book. This is powerful because you as a user can change this. So a value of 1 would be like a 100% or a full value. So you can see on this example here, corn, ground dry, has a value of 1. Let's talk the corn first. If I go to crack corn, which means some of it will come through in the feces, we lower the starch availability by basically 5 percentage points. If you go to steam flaked, it's 4% above the base value, as is high moisture corn. And as we would anticipate, cane molasses is very high at 104 value. So you can manipulate this based on particle size and the source of the carbohydrate coming in the feeding program. However, they do not give you any micron values or heat treatment values to allow you to make these values and these adjustments. That will be some of the art that you'll have to apply. Now you can see corn silage at the top of the chart. If we have normal corn silage, 32 to 38 percent dry matter, the value is 0.94. If I go to drier corn silage, that value goes down because the kernels get harder and they are less digested. Therefore, if you are kernel processing or plant processing, you will have to adjust these values up or down accordingly. Again, a bit of that art comes into play. But finally, we can adjust for starts availability in the ration itself. What about the general energy values of feeds? As a guideline, forages drop a bit more than other feedstuffs, especially the lower quality forages. That's a good move. They get hit pretty hard. Actually, the protein values were increased in energy value compared to the old NRC, and grains remained about the same. But here's an important take-home point. If you're calculating net energy value lactations in diets, generally the new NRC is going to be three or four units lower compared to the old NRC. Therefore, an old NRC value of 0.78 is comparable to a 0.73. So you've got to be sure you're not mixing and matching NRCs because you're going to get different values and different interpretations. Let's take a look at some of the individual feeds. You can see here we take a fairly low quality alfalfa. 
And you can see the old NRC 0.59, the new NRC 0.51. So you can see we dropped this by about nine points from where it was before. You can read the rest of the feeds. I won't bother reading through this. But you can see corn silage stayed remarkably close. Corn went up a little bit, as we mentioned earlier. Corn gluten feed got hit a little bit harder. Cotton seed surprisingly got hit pretty hard. You can see soybean meal is up quite a bit. And soybeans increased a lot more. So you can see using the summative equations, feeds do change around a bit compared to the old NRC. And you'll have to learn these numbers or be aware of them when you use the new model. Let's look at the energy requirements. Again, there are some that have changed and some that have stayed the same. Maintenance and energy yields are very similar. So we're saying it, it takes about the same amount of energy to produce a pound of 4% fat corrected milk in the old NRC as in the new NRC. But here's something neat. When you use the model, you can vary milk protein and milk lactose independent of fat test. So instead of having that normal 85-86% ratio, if your herd of cattle you're working with has an unusually high protein compared to fat test or lactose, you can actually enter the actual amount and you can enter protein on both a crude and or a true protein basis depending on what country and how your labs are reporting the information back to you. For those of us that have pastured animals, we've increased the pasture requirement about 10% for activity. And if that pasture is then adjusted for distance from the milking parlor, frequency of trips, and also the topography or slope. So we really try to fine tune the extra maintenance requirements for cattle on pastures. And here's the big one. Pregnancy changes do change related to the days pregnant. So a cow that is only 190 or 200 days pregnant has a lower energy requirement than one that is very close to calving. And that's what happens in the real world. Unfortunately, no guidelines were provided for twinning, which is occurring more frequently on many high-producing dairy farms here in the United States. Now let's look at some of the carbohydrate relationships we have in the NRC as guidelines. Again, there's going to have to be some tweaking here by our users. So we are using 4-H NDF on the leftmost column. So as the forage NDF goes down, which means you are feeding less forage fiber, you can see the total amount of NDF should go up. So the committee is trying to balance rumen dynamics with total fiber level. You can also see as you have less forage NDF, the actual amount of ADF will also go up to protect the rumen. And you can see they are dropping down on the NFC. This is a very powerful chart because it shows that you've got to balance all these various carbohydrate fractions to try to optimize rumen performance. Again, you're going to have to do some tweaking here. And again, the definition of forage NDF varies from state to state and from company to company. Very powerful table, but recognizes the important relationships between these various fractions. Now, let's look at some other carbohydrate fractions. You're going to see something called non-structural carbohydrate, or NSC. And this is the enzymatic determination basically developed by Will Hoover's group out at West Virginia. The more common one many of us use is the mathematical calculation of NFC or non-fiber carbohydrate. And you can see two different formulas there depending on how we handle the protein in the NDF fraction. And be sure you know which formula you're using in the model in the feeding programs. Now you can see relationships of these feedstuffs and why it's so very important that we enter the correct one. For example, we can see that the non-structural carbohydrate is quite a bit lower in alfalfa because of the high amount of pectins. And that's the primary variable here. As feeds have more digestible fiber that falls into that NFC, NSC fractions, these numbers vary. And you can see corn grain, they are exactly equal. You come down to soybean meal, you can see big differences. So be sure we are entering the correct value depending which system you're using in ration formulation for energy. Finally, let's wrap up with dry matter intake. Again, there are some subtle changes that are occurring here that you should be aware of. To determine the predictive equation, some 17,000 cow records with weeks of data were used to generate this rather complicated equation. We'll let you read that. But you can see big players will be 4% fat corrected milk, the body weight of the cow, and weeks of lactation. And that's a big change. So as cows get into later lactation, we see higher dry matter intakes. We see in our second bulleted items, the adjustments for days in lactation reaches 100%, somewhere around 10 to 15 weeks after lactation occurs or is initiated. However, we get there quicker with second and later lactation cows 
and much, much later for first lactation cows, and that is built into the software. If you want to see that figure, you'll have to look it up in the NRC book. It is illustrated for you, but that's what happens in the real world. Heifers are slower coming up in dry matter intake, and probably why we tend to have flatter lactation curves in that lactation. But now let's take a look what effects that have, and you'll see some big numbers here. For example, if I have a group of cows giving 77 pounds of milk, in the old NRC, we would predict about 47 to 48 pounds of dry matter. The new NRC bounces it up to 52. Of course, you can see across the board, we're seeing 4 to 5 to 6 pounds more dry matter intake on these cows. If your cows cannot achieve these higher dry matter intakes, be sure you go back in the model and put the actual number in. We feel under excellent environmental conditions, high quality forages, and good buck management, we can approach these higher numbers, especially in high producing herds. But dry matter is so critical in balancing rations, we sure we put the actual number in. Well, this completes our module on the new NRC 2001 on energy applications. Thanks, and have a good day.